I'm here with uh, Jay Moore, who is the global learning and cultural leader from GE, uh, to talk about the future of learning. Jay, thank you so much for joining us today. Edelson, it's a pleasure. Thank you. So, Jay, maybe uh, to, to get started and before getting to the subject itself, could you please tell us a little bit uh, about uh, your role at GE and what are you guys uh, up today at, at the GE? Uh, absolutely, Edelson. Uh, so, uh, welcome from my home. I'm, I'm dialing in from Connecticut, and this is my current surrounds uh, as of late. And my role is just really privileged. I have a global team where we focus predominantly on leadership development. So from early stage career to, to the most senior levels in the organization. So my team is responsible for the design of that curricula, as well as the delivery of that curricula. And from a Crotonville, Crotonville is kind of like our brand image and name from GE. It's one of the oldest corporate universities that, that was started and still very vibrant and still ever changing. And I, I'm based out of the Austin New York campus. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Jay. And I think, yeah, the GE is really, uh, I mean, I think you guys are famous for, for initiating that, right. that movement, right? Investing massively, massively into learning and development. Jay, um, tell me a little bit. I think uh, the, the learning industry is obviously uh, turning upside down, has been disrupted right. for a long time. But now with the COVID thing, things are accelerating, right? Exactly. Uh, in, in, in your view, what would be sort of the, let's say, the three mega trends that you are seeing that are going to be shaping the future of learning? Yeah, and I, th I think the way you characterize that as the accelerant, you, you know, this has been a catalyst, right, in the past year to move things. It's always been in our learning strategy as it relates to digitization, blended learning, and this has moved us faster. Um, so when you look at all of the challenges, there's also just a lot of what we found, Adelson, in, in being able to prove some things in a way that we didn't even know we could do ourselves, just given the timelines, right, like so many of us are facing into. So the trends I think are going to be consistent to what you and many of the learning communities see. And, and one is, I would say, one is the personalization, right? So we're just seeing through the use of technology, through the use of AI, as you're starting to see that come through. Do you look at navigation? Personalization is one that just continues to come forefront to me and in our teams. The other one is just the use of, of blended and work now more of the blended it tends to be more on technology platforms, but you know, this notion of the physical space with the work that you're doing with real time, that the whole notion of blended is going to continue. And, and I think this notion of where we have had paradigms of classroom are quickly reshaping, right? And that, I think that's pretty obvious. And then a lot of the, the work you see, at least what we see in GE and I see externally is more about in the flow. So, more of the work that we do from a learning development, how are you applying that at the moment you need, at the time you need, and the relevancy of which it's needed. And so those are the three, personalization blended and in the flow, Adelson, are three things that, that I see fairly consistently. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense to me, Jay. And I think that's, uh, it, it's something that, I, that I'm seeing around those conversations that I'm doing with, uh, with our colleagues. Uh, but when it comes to, let, let's say, personalization, Jay, do, are, are you seeing yeah. some concrete examples? Because there is the yeah. promise out there, but it's, it's sometimes hard to deliver, right? <laughs> what, 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 right. what sort of examples are you seeing and things that you yeah. say, hey, that's, that's really good. They are really personal learning here. Right. You know, sometimes you kind of go through those changes, right, Adelson? It's like sometimes the technology is not where you need it to be, or it's really subtle, right, in nature, and you're not even actually identifying it as such. I'll give you an example. Um, so one of the classes we had held, this is work we had done over the past year, where, you know, we were working on just financial acumen of our participants. And the grouping that we had that were for that particular class you know, we had various backgrounds for this particular leadership development program where you had people from HR, people from supply chain, people from finance backgrounds, people from sales backgrounds. And one of the, one of the areas that we were working on was around financial acumen. So prior to going into the simulation in the work you were doing, the partner we work with was doing what I would call adaptive learning. And I think that's just like a really good example of technology that's in place today that's going through decision tree and, and, and 
um, analysis of based upon your response either moves you ahead of content that you don't need because based upon your response, you've been able to show competence. Or if you're not able to cross that hurdle, it requires you to have a few more steps, right? So even though that doesn't sound like far out technically, right? For me, it's like, that's like a great example of where machine technology and learning is able to work with an employee base to say that once we get everyone in that classroom, we at least have a level set of where everyone's at. But how we got to that level set is gonna be different from someone that has the background, like from finance, versus someone that doesn't. So the faculty member that's leading that session now doesn't have to work on bringing people up to that same level. So I, that, that for me is like a really real example. Another area we're seeing is, um, you're starting to see this today of where you have group chats and group community of conversations, you're seeing real-time translations. So if I'm dialing in from China, it's coming back to me in Mandarin. And I'm able to see, I'm able to see the conversation in Mandarin versus where we tend to be more, right? Okay, let's just put it in English, right? Everybody has to kind of guide themselves through. Now you're able to see in natural language what yes. that conversation is. So those are areas where it's like, it's kind of early you're seeing, uh -huh. but it's going to move forward. And, and that's, those are just two concrete examples I would share, Adelson, to bring yeah, it to and, life a bit. And, and I love that. I, and I, I agree with you. I think it's really the, the fact that we can do uh, personalized learning in, uh, using data, right, to scale that up to, to everyone. I think the role of data, I think, is key, don't you think, Jay? There's no, there's no doubt, but it, it's, it's how you use that data, right, to advance what you're doing. And, and, you know, you look at the trends of, as you start with future of learning, I think some of our best friends as learning professionals is your IT department and your data analytics people, right? So get yourself a great statistician right? Somebody that can help you understand the data so you're making better choices as it relates to what's really speaking to your audiences because you and I in our learning community tends to be measured on, okay, if I have a series of 10 episodes of micro learning, who's engaging and how are they tracking through that? Are they doing completions, right? You're able to now start using data in a way that starts help you solve that problem of getting more people through the system and building that confidence. So you're spot on. So think your IT partners, your data people, and then I think just increasingly the, the, the external partners that you have, those vendors you have are increasingly becoming so much more important in the work we do, Addison. Those, those are three that really come to mind. Absolutely. And I think we have to really nurture this sort of network, right, to make sure that we are having in the ecosystem partners and vendors that can, can help us to keep up the, the speed because everything is going to be really fast. You're, it's so, that is so true, right? And, and um, you know, I think the, the day and age of where, Adelson, you and I or our learning organizations felt we had to create everything organically, I think those days are fading away. There's more ubiquitous need that we have to, with a little humility, admit as it relates to what we're trying to solve, where we're still dealing with humans and human behavior, right? Which is the, one of the highest variation products we have in the system with very similar needs based upon the level you're at in the organization. So more of the use of our design teams today is around setting the context of the use uh, as well as the curation of those assets from our partners to make it relevant into the organizational frame that we have. So that's one you kind of struck a nerve. You can tell I almost jump out of my seat on that because I'm becoming increasingly convinced we don't have to create it as much internally versus how we curate that externally. I totally agree with you, Jay. Thanks. Thanks so much for sharing that. Let me move to the second one, the blended yeah. learning. I think this is a great, a great topic because uh, what, what we are watching after the pandemics uh, I, I think that the COVID thing was the best CDO, the best chief digital officer ever, right? Because the, yeah, the transformation, change agent. yeah, that we live in right. like two months, what we didn't have in, in five years in terms of uh, use of digital tools and, and things like that. What sort of uh, applications you were seeing for the blended learning 
uh, and, and practices that you were seeing, sort of best practices that you were watching around mm -hmm. the community of learning that you really think that the, this, is, this is really good and that's going to stay, uh, you know, after, after the pandemic. Yeah, and Ryan Edelson, it's been hard on our employees and for ourselves, right? You know, it's this whole notion of how our windows now, I mean, look, you're, this is my whole office, right? You're able to see the knickknacks and things that are around me, right? And recognizing the challenges employees are dealing with and facing into. So that empathy piece really comes out and well-being piece comes out. You know, as I reflect in the first half of the year, we had already been on a track of, of continuous learning over a period of time, micro learning, and then saving those face to face for a very kind of precious time together that still brings it all together. And what this forced us to do was take anything that we would have had planned globally in classroom participation and within a month's time, turn it around and prove to ourselves that we can still curate and engage our employees in a meaningful way, right? That our business partners say it's valuable and more importantly, our employees do. So one of the things early on that we saw was just really just the basics um, and working with, you know, it actually, actually kind of stemmed up regionally, right? So as this was discovered and the challenges that we were having just locally in China, we had to help our China colleagues and teams help employees that for the first time were forced to work from a remote location, help them be able to um, manage and lead differently. So a lot of those that early work we did was creating content and working with other partners to be able to get content to help our employees lead and work together remotely in ways that they hadn't done before, as well as have a community to be able to share with them that they're not alone. And the challenges that they're facing into you know, we have a way to be able to help them understand that. We learned so much from our China colleagues and how that was working, that then translated to Europe. And as the pandemic grew in size, we started branching out and created more custom webinars and conversations based upon uh, those employee needs. And these are gonna be the typical t topics, Addison, right? First, you know, working remotely, leading remotely, empathy, resilience, change, and that just changed dramatically. Now as, as employees have come to, you know, we're nine months into this now, right? And people have learned to kind of work in the constraints and the environment that they're in. We're now able to start putting in some things as it relates to a little bit more future aspirational. So now we can get onto some of the capabilities and areas of where we want to move the organization, but you kind of have to get through that first phase first. So for us, our faculty, or they, if you look at the early webinars and work they did and how they were curated to where they're at now, so different, right? <laughs> right? You could see that, yeah, even though we would, would have been competent in some areas, they are so much better on facilitation, the group dynamics, working with the technology. Our coordinators move into producers and how they're able to communicate with the group, manage technical difficulties work with the team dynamics, bringing people in and out. In nine months time, they've done just an amazing job and they're so much better. And that actually sets us forth that as you start with the question, so much better for 2021, because look, this is, we know the world's gonna get better. This will be behind us at some point. It's gonna take us still a while. So how do we take that today? And now knowing what is possible, it now becomes part of our strategy right, for 2021. And it is going to make us rethink when we do have that time face-to-face. -face. And people are going to still want that face-to-face -face time, right? Yeah. How do we curate that differently, right? Yeah. And that's going, to be, that's going to be a really key answer. So those are some of the reflections, Adelson. It's a big question. So I, I, it, it takes a little bit to be able to share in that. that I love that, you know, and, and I totally agree with you. I think there is a there's a huge conversation that we're going to have to have in terms of the quality that we were delivering. And the only way to, to build that, I think, for everyone, because no one was really expecting that to, you know, there is no, there is no playbook. There is not. We just need to exactly. go, go with the, the sort of test and learn mode and, and learn fast from, from the process. And I think that's exactly what you're expressing here. Test and learn is spot on. It's, it's we as individuals, as parents and teaching, it's our, universities, it's our, it's our, it's our, you know, our elementary and 
school systems, look at how rapidly they are. Absolutely. So all of that system had to change. And, and look, some people are comfortable with that, others are not, right? So you gotta help them and bring them along as well. Spot on. Yeah, totally agree. Jay, let me move to the third, the third point that you, yeah. that you mentioned before, which I think it's fundamental and, and, and very sort of hot topic right now here for us too. Uh, it, it's moving, you, you mentioned, right, uh, in the flow, learning in the flow of work yeah. and all this notion that we are uh, bringing the, those, the learning that was traditionally given in, in, in a special setting, in a classroom, whatever, and then moving that to the, uh, to the, to the place of work. And, and, and it resonates with me with a lot of... Uh, what we are talking about social learning and things like that, how we learn together, like what you're just doing here, right? And learning right. from you in terms of perspectives and things like that. Right. Can, can you tell me a little bit more from, from a practical standpoint, some, some, again, some examples, what exactly are you seeing that, that's, that's good practice in terms of uh, moving from that traditional way of top down to a more like uh, I support you when you need in, in, in the time that you need and the way you need it directly in the flow of work? Yeah, it's um, so look, you, you, we've not achieved perfection, right? This is an ongoing concern, right? So let me share with you just a, a couple of examples of where we, we have this. Now, we're fortunate internally. We have, we have a learning platform that we've built out over time that uh, really highlights some of the key areas of either behaviors that we're driving as an organization and capabilities. For our organization, um, a lot of work and focus on lean. So the practice of, of lean. So we've been able to house in a lean collection by going to our employees, spending time with our employees, spending time with our leadership to really map out what is it that they need? and What is it that we think that they need? So for example, um, one of the biggest areas that our CEO asks us to work with is problem solving. And at the surface level, it's like problem solving. Well, doesn't that sound like really easy to do? But it's not, right? <laughs> it's just, it's a, it's a discipline. There's uh, expertise. There is application as a, you know, relates to problem solving that you got to be practiced at. Otherwise, you can make the problem actually worse in what you do. So one of the things that we did was, you know, with the aspirations of Masterclass, are you familiar with the Masterclass series of where you take that expert, you break it down into teachable moments? So that's what we've been doing. So we have one of our more senior leaders that is extremely practiced at this. We leveraged the methodology that we created internally over a period of 10 episodes. We provided the tools and templates for the employees. So as our leader is reviewing that in the master class, we're asking a few questions during the video. It forces you to kind of go through and then it gives you the tools and templates. And then we have a community of people that uh, based upon after you go through that episode, you can then go into a discussion and be surrounded by experts. So for me, that's like a really good example, Addison, of where we have somebody that's got the practice, we share the tools, it's full transparency, but we walk you through the leverage of how you use them. And then we invite you to go into a community of those that are practiced to help you actually apply. And it's all searchable. So where we have four stages of problem solving, you can search on any area of that, go in and apply. So that one's been very encouraging. And I'll tell you the employee response has been, it surprised us even more than what we were expecting. We set a pretty high bar. And the, the organic response for employees has been fantastic. So as we go through each of these lean tool sets, for the system that we've been building internally, we're creating master classes, collections, tools and templates and community. And that for me is a real time use of that that I'm just seeing practically be implemented. And it's pretty exciting because we're seeing the engagement levels being really high and that's a really good signal for us. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, it's fascinating. And, and, and how do you, because one of the keys, I think it's also to, uh, identify and, and, and sort of uh, uh, facilitate the conversation and, and create this uh, community, the sense of community, right? Where people really participate. How, how do you do that? And maybe also, how do you select the person that you say that's the expert? So let's say the problem solving thing, right? Who, who, how do you, do you have a process in place to identify we those do. experts? We do. And um, 
you know, I think that's where each company kind of needs to look internally to see how do they leverage current networks and, and forums by which you're able to kind of pull out into that. So, you know, your question kind of goes into where does it all start? And with Lean, we have a Kaizen promotion office. And in many companies that have been driving that Lean methodology, you have a small office of where you bring the lean leaders for each of the businesses together with a very small, we have a very small corporate uh, office of, of lean. And from that group, we've been kind of really setting the standards for the company around our monthly operating reviews. What are the key content areas of the company? And then starting to actually build the standards. And we're fortunate we have a culture within from a leadership perspective, Adelson, that it makes it easier for us. So for example, on problem solving, let's just start with that. The Kaizen Promotion Office went to all the business lean leaders and said, look, we're gonna to get together. This is when we could actually get together in a room. Now we do this virtually. And for a week, we're gonna do a Kaizen event and we're gonna do a workout for a week over those five days to take all of the content that resides around problem solving and let's create the GE way. And during that time, so we had uh, our CEO chose that was the first topic he wanted us to, you know, he joined that group of, we had about 15 of us in that room. It was a set of designers. We had a CEO sponsor who's pretty well versed that the chairman said, you know, we could use your help. And through that, at the end of the week where we would have had maybe six or seven different models of problem solving, at the end of that week, we said, here is the GE way of getting it done. Here's the GE standard. We took the best of the best, put it together. And then from that, uh, we, that was the way we created that content. Then from that content, starting to roll that out in the businesses virtually and our executive sponsor, and just through kind of our observations, we said, hey, here's somebody out of that team that who just shines at being able to share the narrative and the expertise. And that's who we're gonna use for the master class. So that's how it kind of starts. So think KPO, think of getting the businesses to create that standard. And then through that natural, you know, work, we found somebody that was really good, put it out there and then we extended, extended that. And now that's just been, in fact, before we came on the call, I was with one of the lean leaders who were conducting a virtual problem solving class before I jumped on. So your timing couldn't be better, Adelson. <laughs> I hope that helps explain that because it does root itself. That that helps a lot. That's very clear, Jay, and I really do appreciate Good. that. So uh, yeah, so we, we heard, you know, personalization, blended learning, yep. learning the flow of work, sort of the key elements that yep. are shaping yep. the future of uh, learning. Jay, thank you so much for finding time to talk to us. I really do appreciate that. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you.